Pay attention, 007. This one's important. Paul on the bowl and get to get my darling. Paul on the bowl. Hi, welcome back. Uh, I'm Statsbloke. Um, we're going to be looking today at what I think is the most important skill of the entire repertoire of skills that you need to play World of Warships. And that skill is situational awareness, knowing what's going on around you, being able to use that information. And it's really the, uh, the gunpowder in the cannon of your uh, skills weapon. So it's the, the skill that all your other skills feed into, and it's the tool that you're going to use to employ those skills um, in the game to success. So I'm going to try and teach you um, a specific way to look at situational awareness, and this is the way that I approach situational awareness. Um, now, the beginning of this video is going to be a little bit dry. I'm going to go into the process. Uh, there's going to be some diagrams. If you can get through that bit, if you can, um, if you can digest that bit, then I promise you there's going to be some action, there's going to be a replay I'm going to take you through uh, of me playing a game and going through this process and explaining it to you. Um, so what is that process then? So the first thing that you're going to need uh, in order to build up your situational awareness is obviously game knowledge. It's the the theory behind the game, uh, the, the way that different ships play, different game types, um, how different mechanics in the game work. And you're going to build that knowledge up over time by playing, by reading around, by watching videos, by maybe by watching these videos. And the other thing is you're going to, as you're playing, you're going to look around you. You're going to look at the mini-map. You're going to look at what the ships around you are doing, both the friendly ships and the enemy ships. You're going to look at the terrain. You're going to look at the whole situation. And then using those two things, using the things that you already know about your ship and the other ships around you, and knowing the things about what's going on around you, you're going to put those two things together and you're going to assess the situation. And then... Based on that assessment, you're going to draw up a mental list. You're not just going to spring straight into action. You're going to draw up a mental list of two things, risks and opportunities. So once you've got a mental list of risks and opportunities, and we're going to come back to that in a second in, in more detail, um, you're then going to use the, that information of risks and opportunities to plan what you're going to do, and then you're going to actually go and do it. Um, however, of course, you know, the game evolves and things change. So there's going to be a continual reassessment going on of, of what's going on around you. And, you know, maybe the situation changes and you have to reassess what the risks and opportunities are and then change the way that you play based on those changes. So let's go into what I mean by risks and opportunities, because that really is the, the important bit here. That it really is the meat um, in this uh, skill sandwich. So... The risks are basically the things which are going to cause you to become dead. The things that are going to cause you to become sunk. Um, these might be things like being spotted, uh, being radared, hydroed, um, being torpedoed, being shot, uh, being set on fire, being caught out in the open, being cornered, being flanked, cut off from the rest of your team. All those things are risks to you being alive. And basically, if you're not alive, if you're at the bottom of the ocean, you can't uh, do anything. You, you are dead and you are no longer a help to yourself or to your team. So you have to avoid being dead uh, unless there is a significant payback for you being dead. If you can uh, take advantage of an opportunity and you end up being dead as a result, but you get a good payback, maybe you take two or three ships with you, maybe that's good, but generally being dead is bad. Opportunities are things that you can do for yourself or for your team that will help your team win and help you get things like damage and experience and those kind of things. Um, so these might be things like hitting an enemy ship with your artillery, uh, hitting an enemy ship with torpedoes, capping an objective, getting into a position where you are a deterrent to the enemy team. Um, all these things count as opportunities. Now, the best opportunities are the ones where there is no risk involved. You can do it 
and you're at no risk of being damaged or, or sunk whatsoever. The worst risks are the risks where there's no payback. You're taking a risk and you might be sunk, but there's the, you don't gain anything from it. Those are the worst risks. To be successful, you can't just do one or the other. You can't avoid all risk and you can't take all the opportunities. You have to find the correct balance between the risks and the opportunities because they're paired up. Usually, if an opportunity presents itself, it has some risk associated with it. If you are too risk averse, um, you'll be behind a rock or at the back of the entire game and you'll never get a chance to do anything. And yeah, okay, you might survive to the end of the match, but you're not going to be helping your team to win and actually you're going to be actively helping your team to lose by doing that. The other side is being a bit too pushy, a bit too gung-ho, trying to go after the opportunities, ignoring the risks. It's going to have the same result. You're going to be dead and you're not going to be a help to your team and you will help your team to lose if you do that. So you need to find that middle ground, that sweet spot between uh, avoiding risks and taking opportunities but taking some acceptable risks there there is going to be some risk and you are going to have to take some risks and it's finding that that sweet spot of risk taking and that really is the crux of this it's risk management taking the risks which are worth taking once you get good at this you're not going to be reacting anymore to what's going on around you purely you're also going to be able to use your situational awareness skills to actually create opportunities for you and for your team, and to minimise risks by manipulating what's going on in the game uh, to make it the best situation for you. And that really is the, the evolution of this skill. You go from being quite reactive to being quite proactive. Risks and opportunities are quite uh, ship dependent. So obviously if you're in a battleship, your risks and your opportunities are going to be very different to if you're in a destroyer. So, for example, showing your broadside to a light cruiser when you're in a battleship, not much of an issue. If you're in a light cruiser and you show your broadside to a battleship, that's going to be a problem. So the risk opportunity profile of each ship class and each individual ship is going to be slightly different. A good place to get information about the ship that you are planning on sailing is the wiki. So... The, the official wiki, wiki page for uh, World of Warships goes into each ship and shows you a write-up and, and the characteristics of that ship and actually has a list for each ship of the pros and the cons of each ship. Go and have a look at it. It's really good information. Um, not everything is in there and you might not agree with everything, but it's a good place to go and look to get some basic information. I am about to show you a replay. It's going to be me playing the tier 6 Pensacola. So here are the characteristics from the wiki of that Pensacola. Um, you'll see that it's a heavy cruiser. It has 8-inch guns. Um, they have very good AP penetration because of that. So you can hit hard if the opportunity presents itself. Um, it also has quite American-like shell arcs, so you can lob islands quite easily. They're not very flat arcs, they're quite loopy which means that you can, although the, the shells are quite hard to aim with and they take a while to get there, you can actually lob islands so you can hide behind uh, ground cover quite nicely. Um, it has pretty good maneuverability, so um, the rudder shift is quite good particularly, so quite good for changing direction suddenly and uh, avoiding torpedoes. Um, however, the gun rotation, the turret rotation, is terrible. And so um, one thing it suffers from is when you have to change direction quickly, the guns can't follow you, and so you end up, if you have to make a sharp turn, um, your guns won't be available to you necessarily to shoot the thing that you're avoiding. Um, particularly difficult if a destroyer comes around a corner, as you'll see in the uh, replay I'm about to show you. Um, as a cruiser, it also has pretty terrible armor, um, and is pretty much made of a citadel. If you enable the armor layout in the port for a ship, you can see where the citadel is. If you strip away the outer layers of armour and you'll have a look at the Pensacola and you'll see that the, the Citadel, particularly in the middle of the ship, is quite high, it's above the water, and it's really easy to hit and you can be deleted really, really easily by other cruisers and particularly by battleships. The Pensacola also has pretty terrible concealment, so you're going to be spotted quite quickly. Now, I'm going to show you this replay and as it's going through, I'm going to try and show you on the screen by annotating the... 
uh, the running list of risks and opportunities that are presenting themselves to me and, and what I'm doing about them. Um, so I'll, I'll try as much as possible. There's going to be a lot going on, but I'll try as much as possible to have on the screen uh, the risks and the opportunities. I'm going to explain what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. Now, this isn't a perfect game by any means. Um, it's not even a particularly exciting game, to be honest. Um, it was a standard battle. The enemy uh, pushed my flank that I was on, um, so I didn't go very far, but there was still quite a lot going on, and it's quite a good example of um, how to assess risks and opportunities and um, how to bear situational awareness in mind for a successful outcome. Um, so I'll move over to that replay now, um, and you can see what I did. So this is a recording. Um, the cursor that you can see was my cursor while I was playing. It's not the cursor that I'm controlling right now. Um, I'm just going to skip through the uh, beginning of the match and uh, get into the battles. Worth just pausing here for a second. So you can see I'm top tier. There's a carrier on each side. Um, there's four battleships on each side, four cruisers, and three destroyers. The map's fault line, um, and this is a bit of a mixed bag for cruisers. Um, the centre of the map is pretty much a no-go zone, especially at the beginning of the match, um, because the battleships are immediately north and south of the centre, and if you go in the middle, you're going to get deleted. Um, but the sides offer a bit more cover, and especially for an American cruiser, um, the left-hand side, where I happen to have spawned, is pretty good, because you can uh, park at the bottom and you can shoot over the islands up to the stuff that comes around the corner at the top. So bearing in mind the uh, the risks and opportunities that are posed by this map and the risks and opportunities posed by my Pensacola here, let's get into the match. On this map, um, the enemy team uh, tends to split, um, usually 50-50, 33-66, something like that. Um, and so I'm expecting to see um, a destroyer and some cruisers come over to the, uh, to the top left there, um, uh, directly opposite where I am. And then um, a minute or two later, um, some battleships to come across. So my plan is still to, to push up to that island in front of me um, and to see what comes around the corner and also to keep an eye on my team and see what they do. Um, I can already see that the three battleships um, in the cap, in our home cap, uh, seem to be all turning right, which means we're not going to have any battleship support. So I need to bear that in mind and I need to um, be prepared to make a quick exit. An opportunity here is that that jam way ahead of me is going to do some spotting. Maybe the Nicholas on the right hand side as well. Um, they'll spot something uh, for me to shoot um, without it being able to see me potentially. So here's our first real risk. Um, these fighters here have just spotted me. My plane spotting distance is 6.9 um, and here come some bombers as well. But um, the risk here is that ships that I can't see yet can see me um, and so they might be able to hit me um, even before I spot them. Uh, so I might get deleted before the game has even started. However, if you look at where our battleships are, their battleships are going to be in a pretty similar position. They're probably not going to be able to shoot me yet. Um, so it's only going to be destroyers and cruisers that can get to me. I'm going to nose in as my mitigation to that risk um, and make sure that I'm not presenting my broadside to the top of the map. Um, those bombers are another risk, um, but I have defensive AA, I'm pretty manoeuvrable, um, and they're probably not going to pose too much of a problem, although if I do have to swerve to avoid airdrop torpedoes, I could take a broadside. Now, that, there we go, there were some uh, shots that just came down from a ship that I can't see, and this Jan Wei has smoked up and is sitting in his smoke, so he's not spotting the things which are shooting at me. So the opportunity which I had identified previously is not happening because that Jamway is not helping me to do that. Um, so I've got to mitigate this uh, situation at the moment by pushing up into this island in front of me uh, to get cover from the, uh, the shots that are coming in um, and to wait and see what crops up. Hopefully that Jamway will uh, leave a smoke uh, and do some spotting for me or, or uh, something else will spot for me like the carrier for example. Um, although I note that the carrier's planes are actually on the other side of the map, so that's not going to happen. So I'm just going to sit tight for a minute um, and be ready to uh, turn around and run away because I'm expecting at least half the enemy team to be up ahead of me just here. Now from out of nowhere, a Minikaze pops up right in front of our Jamway because he's sitting in his smoke and he can't see. 
um, the Minikaze is going to rush in by the looks of it. Now this is a problem for me because if the Janway dies, um, I'm the Minikaze's next target. Um, and if he comes around the corner, uh, I'm not going to be able to do much to get out of the way of his torpedoes. Now, the Jianwei launches deep water torpedoes at the Minikaze, which won't hit it. Um, I think that was just a panic. Um, but now it's me and this Minikaze and his buddies. Uh, I haven't got much in the way of support. The Koenig uh, hasn't got here yet, although he's on his way. Um, and I need to make sure I can run away from this Minikaze because I need to get some distance um, because he could easily rush me. Um, and kill me with his torpedoes once they've reloaded. Um, but I need to get away um, by presenting the minimum possible target to these other cruisers. Um, I can fire back, um, which I'm, I'm doing now with HE because they're angled. Um, but um, I just need to get some distance from that Minikaze because if he comes around the corner when I'm at a distance, I can, I can shoot him. Um, but close by, my uh, turret rotation isn't great enough so um, I can easily kill him but um, I need a little bit of distance to be able to do that and I need to create that opportunity by running away. So there's an opportunity presenting itself here for me to uh, get into a position where I can fire nicely on these two cruisers and perhaps the uh, the Minikaze will pops up again um, and, and help this Koenig um, who is the best weapon we have against these two cruisers. Um, the Koenig can hit these guys quite hard. Um, but uh, if I'm the one at the front, they're going to be hitting me, not him. Um, so I am retreating. But I've got in mind also that the Koenig obviously is quite vulnerable to the Minikaze's torpedoes. Um, but I noticed that the Emerald is uh, pushing in a little bit, um, probably up to the island. Nope, he's going to turn around. So um, there's at least something still in between uh, the Koenig and the Minikaze. I didn't want to leave him high and dry. Um, so I have considered that. Um, I take a little bit of a risk here by uh, turning broadside to the gal, um, but I need to get across to that island, um, and he's probably still got a HE loaded. I can see that he's firing at the Koenig, so the risk is minimal. Um, I'm still sort of kiting just in case they turn their attention to me. Uh, kiting is when you uh, run away by turning left and right and making yourself difficult to hit by changing your uh, angle and your speed. Uh, you see me uh, using the throttle here and, and changing uh, my position. Uh, to make it hard for them to hit me. Um, some planes come in, but I don't think they're going to come anywhere near me. I've got my fighter up anyway uh, as an extra uh, mitigation against the Minikaze's torpedoes because I don't have hydro. I have the defensive AA uh, ability instead um, because there's usually carriers at tier 5 and 6. Um, the, the gal is now coming under heavy fire. I think uh, he's going to be dead, so this is a perfect opportunity to, um, to get some good damage on him. Uh, without too much risk, uh, because the the others seem to be focusing on the uh, Koenig. Um, I'm still aware that Minikaze is there somewhere, so he's a bit of a risk. Um, and um, while the Koenigsberg is busy, I'm going to turn uh, broadside onto him. It's, it's a risk, but it's a calculated risk, um, so I can get up into cover behind this island. Um, I'm still spotted, so the, uh, the Minikaze is there somewhere spotting me. Uh, he is not where he is on the minimap. He is somewhere between me and that other island in the distance. Uh, maybe ahead of me, but I think he's to my left somewhere. Um, I'm being targeted. I'm not being targeted. That's usually an indication that an inexperienced destroyer captain has uh, torpedoed you because they switch from their guns to their torps and back again. Uh, and your your targeted number goes from 1 to 0 to 1. Um, I'm uh, trying to get all my guns on the Konigsberg while his attention is not on me. Um, I'm aware there might be torpedoes coming for me, so I'm still moving forwards in behind this island. Because I'm imagining where the torpedoes are going to come from. There they are. Um, so I am quite safe behind this island. There's a Minikaze. I think he's trying to rush me again. So I've got exactly the same situation coming up that I had before. Where if he gets around that corner, I'm going to struggle to deal with it. So I immediately accelerate and try and get some distance whilst keeping the island between me and those cruisers who could wreck me. I noticed that my colleagues in the Koenig and the Emerald are also kiting away. That's fine because the other side of our team, the other half, are pushing up the east-hand side quite nicely and seem to be winning. So all we've got to do on this flank is to defend. Now the Minikaze comes around the corner. I'm now running away, so it's going to be very difficult for him to get torpedoes on me. It's very difficult to torpedo a ship that is going away from you. Um, because the uh, the torps are almost the same speed as the ship, and so it's actually quite easy to avoid. And also, the ship, uh, me in this case, tends to run out of the range of the torpedoes before they actually get there. 
Um, here, there they go. There's, there's the torps spotted by my plane. Uh, planes aren't just good for um, uh, fighter planes aren't just good for shooting down enemy planes. They're also good for spotting torpedoes. Um, not as good as hydro, but they'll do. Um, particularly if, if you've got the the double fighter perk or double spotted plane perk, um, twice as much chance to spot things. Uh, another opportunity is presenting itself here for me to take the Konigsberg out of the game. Um, I'll be covering this in a future video, but if you've got the chance to kill something, you should always take it, um, especially if there's little risk to you, because less uh, guns on the enemy team, less torpedoes on the enemy team, uh, means that you get a significant advantage. So always take the shot if you've got the chance of killing something. Um, so the Konigsberg is going to go down here, hopefully. Um, the Minikaze, I, I've got enough distance, but I am very aware of the fact that his goal in life at the moment is to try to kill the three of us, so me, the Emerald, and the Koenig, um, by torpedoing us and get into the cap because our entire enemy team is up on the other flank of the map. They're doing very well, um, but it's going to take them a long time to get back. So if these guys can kill us, the Minikaze can get into the cap, and it's going to be very difficult. There we go, I've just got the kill. Uh, very difficult for uh, them to get back to decap, and the Minikaze could very well win by capping our base. Uh, there we go, I'm just telling the rest of the team that the Minikaze is still there, don't forget about him. I'm hoping that perhaps the Alba in the middle of the map might turn around and come back uh, to help us out. Uh, something else that's cropped up as a risk while I've been talking has been that the... Uh, the unspotted battleship, um, the Koenig on the enemy team, has popped up. Um, he stayed unspotted for a very long time. Um, and so there wasn't much of a risk to me previously because um, cruisers, um, it's just going to be tit for tat, you know, me uh, shooting them, them shooting me. And I've got the backup of the Emerald and the Koenig here. But their Koenig uh, could cause me and this Emerald a big problem um, if we show our broadside. So you'll notice that I've got my uh, backside pointed pretty much at the Koenig here. Uh, just in case he takes a shot. Um, he's not currently spotted, but he can definitely see me and could be uh, potentially looking to shoot me. Uh, although, if I were him, I'd be shooting this emerald if uh, he can be, if he can see him. Uh, although the emerald is now smoking up. Um, I think that emerald is just smoking himself, but I say thank you anyway because that smoke might be useful to me uh, and actually present, potentially presents an opportunity. Um, I might be able to get that into that smoke and, and use it, so I just turn here, um, I'm behind the island, I'm pretty safe from the Koenig, and I turn around to try and get into that smoke, but I've got to bear in mind as I do this that my turret rotation is not very good, uh, and so getting my guns back around to point at the Alba and the Koenig is going to take a long time, um, but I've also got my eye on that Minikaze, um, and uh, I know that that smoke, uh, actually I'm not sure how long that smoke's been there, but there he is, uh, I think the Emerald has hydro spotted him, so... Um, me having my guns pointed that way has paid off, uh, and I get to take a good shot of them. His torpedoes are going to go nowhere near me, so that's not a risk at all. Uh, however, they might hit the Koenig behind me, so I need to be aware that I might be about to lose my battleship. But hopefully he has seen those torpedoes and will turn to avoid them. Um, so I get another shot now at the Minikaze. Looks like he might be getting a torpedo as well. Uh, Emerald is, is chasing him down, but the Emerald is showing his broadside to the Koenig, so we need to bear in mind the Emerald might not be here for very much longer. Now that Minikaze is out of the way, it's basically three against two down here. It's me and the Emerald and the Koenig versus their Koenig and uh, their cruiser, uh, the Alba. And um, you'll notice that I have put myself, while my attention was on that Minikaze, um, I hadn't taken my attention off of these two, and I've put myself in between, uh, put the island in between me and them so that I can shift backwards and forwards um, and make sure that only one of them can shoot me at a time. Um, so, because I'm aware that the uh, the Koenig can absolutely wreck me and also the Alba, which is a, another uh, heavy cruiser, has um, eight inch guns just like I do. Um, if he can see the side of me, he can uh, do as much damage to me as I can do to him. So I am nosing around this corner uh, I probably shouldn't have gone quite that far, but I'm, I'm having a look, and I'm, uh, I assess that the risk of the Koenig shooting me on the nose is less than the risk of the, the Alba shooting me through the side. But I'm hoping I'm going to be able to lob this island here without him being able to shoot me um, before I get a chance to get back into cover. This was a little bit risky, if I'm honest. I don't think I should have taken this risk. I think I should have nosed into the island, but 
our team is doing pretty well. It looks like we are getting the cap at the top, so I can afford to take a few risks. So I've got AP loaded here. I'm uh, shooting at the Alba, who's presenting a perfect broadside to me. Um, I'm going to start accelerating in a minute, because although he's got HE loaded at the moment, um, it's entirely possible that he'll switch to AP. And I'm showing as much broadside to him as he is to me. Um, I've got a double fire here. Uh, I haven't pressed damage con because uh, this guy is shooting HE at me. And I want to get the maximum out of my health. Um, and try and kill him before he gets the chance to get another fire on me. Uh, hopefully this broadside will sort him out. Nope, missed. Uh, that was five overpens on a cruiser. Um, just shows you how hard hitting uh, the Pensacola is. Uh, all those shells went straight through him. Hopefully this one will do it. Um, yep, there we go. Um, and I managed to survive. He didn't get another fire on me, which is good. So my, my judgement of when to use my damage control paid off. And now I just have the little problem of the full health Koenig on the other side of this rock from me, which is obviously a significant risk, because I only have 1822 health left. And of course, tier 6 cruiser, uh, I don't get a heal. I also don't have torpedoes, um, and my Koenig uh, behind me, who I think, I had probably glanced back in a minute, but I think he's uh, on yeah, a decent amount of health, uh, seems to be running away and looks like he might go to beach himself sideways onto this other Koenig, uh, who is nosing in. Um, actually, I think he's just trying to avoid those planes. Um, so my, uh, my mission in life at the moment is basically to uh, not get hit by this Koenig, um, and try and set him on fire because um, I can help our carrier out here uh, if the carrier gets a fire on him with those dive bombers and he damage cons I can get a permanent fire on him um, and just slow him down and, and help his uh, health pool to decrease um, our team is capping I don't need to kill him we just need to slow him down um, we've pretty much won anyway I'm just trying to A. increase my own damage and my own XP but also just to make sure that he doesn't get into the cap um, I've also got my eye on the fact that the Emerald seems to be making a bit of a meal of the uh, the Ryuji over there. Unfortunately, I've been killed, but um, I did have a uh, an eye on that side of the map, and I was going to turn my guns to shoot the Ryuji if the Emerald uh, got killed. Um, but it all seems to have worked out, and um, yes, I died, um, but I think the uh, the opportunities which I took and the risks which I avoided have enabled me to delay that push down the uh, the west side of the map and allow the large push by our team up the east side of the map to succeed by slowing down that flank of the enemy team. So, uh, looking at the results screen, I'm pretty happy with that. 67,000 uh, tier 6 cruiser is pretty uh, decent. It's not amazing, but it's a uh, pretty good performance. Um, I get two kills um, and... Um, some other flags as well. I came top, which is always nice. 1500 uh, base XP. Uh, just a pretty decent performance, really. Nothing spectacular. Um, but I'm quite happy with that. And it's uh, hopefully been a good demonstration of how to assess the situation that you find yourself in mentally, keep hold of the risks and the opportunities, and then use that information to act accordingly and to be successful. So hopefully that was helpful. Um, the playstyle in the Pensacola, um, because the uh, the realization of the risk of being deleted is is quite um, it's quite easy to get deleted in a, in a cruiser. So you need to be quite risk averse when you're playing it. That's not the playstyle for every single ship. Obviously, if you're in a tanky German battleship, for example, um, you can you can put yourself into some quite risky situations and um, and you'll be okay. Um, you might take some damage, but you're not going to sink. You can see how different ships will have different risk profile, profiles and you're going to play differently in different ships based on that knowledge you had beforehand and the situational awareness that I showed you at the beginning. Um, I hope this has been useful. Um, please do like uh, the video if you found it useful. Um, please do subscribe. Um, if you do subscribe, don't forget to press the notification icon so you get notified of uh, videos that I upload. Um, if there's something that you are struggling with, if there's a skill that you're struggling with, please do put it down in the comments below. I'd be really interested to know um, what things that you're finding difficult, um, and I'll see if I can cover them in these videos. Um, that's all from me for now. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.